discuss the case to leave the building as if you go back into the back foyer, it does echo into the chamber. This time I would ask that you rise with the invocation by Commissioner Randolph, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance from Commissioner Drum. Most holy God, we come to you once again to say thank you for all the blessings you bestowed on our lives, Lord. We thank you for this day and watching over and protecting <clears throat> us and our, our families, our homes, and our jobs, Lord. We thank you for this moment in time right now. Thank you for our commissioners, Heavenly Father. And we ask, Lord, that you continue to bless our staff and the citizens that we serve. And all these blessings we ask in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Commissioners in our packets are the April 12th, 2016 minutes for your review. I will entertain any motion or amendments. Commissioner Randolph. Move to approve. Motion by Commissioner Randolph to approve, second by Commissioner Lauren. Uh, Commissioner Davis. Yeah, I, I think there's an error on the, on the minutes. If you look at the minutes for that meeting with roll call, my name is not there and Mr. Matthews is. Hmm. So if they could correct that as, as oh as, typo, sorry, I'll fix it. As, and as far as the approval of the March eight minutes, it's the same thing with Mr. Matthews and Davis. I know I talk I talk as much as That's Mr. It. Matthews. From, <laughs> I use copy and paste too much, sir. Thank you. <laughs> After uh, that, I'll make a motion to approve with those. Thank you. We have uh, a motion by Commissioner. Uh, Randolph, second by Commissioner Lauren, uh, for the amended minutes as noted. Please vote. Motion carries. This is a public hearing. The public is encouraged to speak on, on behalf or in opposition to any cases heard by this commission. Entering parish right-of-way, servitudes, easements. Entering parish right-of-way, Harrison Avenue, Ward 3, District 2. Request to enter parish right-of-way for the purpose of gaining access to property. The debtor, Dragonfly Enterprises, Inc. <coughs> parish Council District Representative, the Honorable Dennis Sharp. This was postponed at the April 12, 2016 meeting. Staff. Uh, this is a resolution uh, to grant permission to enter the right-of-way, specifically a portion of, I know it says Harrison Avenue, but we need to make a correction to have it say North Harrison Street. North Harrison Street? For 200 feet south of Sunshine Avenue and Malayaville subdivision for the purpose of gaining access to property. Thank you. Is the petitioner here? Is there anyone who wishes to speak in favor of the request? Is there anyone who wishes to speak in opposition to the request? Yes, ma'am. Please come to the podium, state your name and address. <coughs> I'm not good at these microphones. My name is Margo Robin. I live at 19402 Sunshine Avenue, which is ex directly next door to this right of way. My property goes right up to the right-of-way. There is a ditch there. There's a lot of problems with drainage in that area. That ditch often backs up. That land that they're trying to build the right-of-way on provides some drainage for it. The property behind it provides some drainage for it. And we're I am concerned that by building this road, it will upset the drainage more. I'm also concerned because I've spoken to the gentleman who's trying to put this in, he told me he wanted to put in a gravel road or a dirt road, which certainly would not be commensurate with the property whatsoever. And that if this is approved, I certainly would want a full road there. Sunshine gets a lot of traffic. We don't need somebody trying to get off of a dirt road or gravel road trying to get onto that road. There's also a stop sign right there, which would come right where that road is. And people don't stop at that stop sign now. I'm concerned that people will continue to go past that stop sign even more once that right of way is put through. Thank you, ma'am. 
Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in opposition? Seeing no one, we close it to the public and I bring it to the commission. Commissioner Richard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. If I recall correctly, we postponed this last month because no one attended. That's correct. And yet, did, did we make every effort to, to make sure that the petitioner would be present? Yes. I move to postpone. Second. <coughs> Motion by Commissioner Richard to postpone uh, till next month, Commissioner Richard, or do you want to postpone indefinitely? My biggest concern here is we've got a, a, a lady here who came to have her concerns addressed. I'm curious to how many times we're going to make her come back to get the answers. Uh, I mean, that's one of does, it, is it, does anyone have any I have recommendations? A, I, I just was going to try to, um, I, I agree the petitioner needs to be here, but to alleviate some of, of your uh, concerns, part of this resolution that is made that he is petitioning has stipulations with it, and <coughs> it says the petitioner shall permit submit plans prepared by a licensed engineer. The drainage and road design and soil borings must meet the asphalt road standards as established by the subdivision regulation ordinances. The parish engineers require additional off-site work to minimize the uh, potential of the proposed construction and special emphasis regarding drainage. The plans must include sewerage and the water system where applicable. Upon approval of the plans, the engineering, the petitioner must notify the department uh, for any other activities. So this is something that is usually standard, but it usually improves the drainage and that it probably needs a culvert in there and you know whatever, but he has to meet the parish's standards which usually improves anything that they open up. Am I correct? <laughs> yeah, that's correct. And okay. it is going to have to be an asphalt roadway. You can't put a gravel yeah, he, roadway in there. Yeah. Just, to, you know, you were concerned about the, well, he, he has to meet, this is what we vote on and this is what he has to meet our parish standards. So just to alleviate, I know that you've come up and I, I hate that, but I concur with the um, postponement. Let's give him one more month and n notify him I'll um, uh, I'll see if the councilman in well, the area knows anything about you know why he's not coming <laughs> Commissioner Richard you're <clears throat> acceptable of till next month I am acceptable I'd like to hear what other commissioners would like to say but the motion is to postpone for one month thank you and we had a second by Commissioner Randolph okay uh, Commissioner Lauren I just echo what Todd and <clears throat> Ms. Kurzbaum had to say, the purpose of this is give them their day in court to explain why they want to do something and to answer questions. And when two months they don't show up, we shouldn't cause this lady to have to keep coming back month after month after month in case he does show up. So I concur on the one month, but I don't think any more than one month. Okay, Commissioner Davis. Yes, a uh, question for the staff. You see, you did notif notify this individual? Yes. You sent him a letter or did a you A letter talk was to sent him? out and I've made a note for the next letter to be sent out and we'll include it in the staff report. Like so a certified letter or something like that? Uh, I'll have to check and see exactly what we sent make out. Sure we that can it's, you send know, certified that mail kind of in the staff report. Okay. All right. And just as a comment, I think it's the commission has been very consistent and clear that whomever the petitioner is in most circumstances, we expect them to address the public as to why they want to do it. And just as we respect the public who wishes to speak in opposition and taking up their time, the commission has been very consistent with that. Um, so with that being, there's no further comments. We have a motion by Commissioner Richard to postpone for one month, second by Commissioner Randolph. Please vote. Motion to postpone carries. 
Minor Subdivisions, 2016-267-MSP, a combined 19.952 acres into parcels 1, 2, and 3, Ward 9, District 6. The owner, John and D.T. Lindsay, Surveyor J.V. Burks and Associates, Inc., Parish Council District Representative, the Honorable Richard Tanner. Staff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the reason why a, a uh, public hearing is required for this is that one of the parcels is being accessed with a private drive. Uh, the owner is proposing to create three parcels from two existing parcels of 17.552 and 2.40 acres. <clears throat> and since a private drive will provide access to only one parcel, said drive is not required to be built to a pair of standard two in a section 40-045.01 maintenance standards for a private drive of subdivision ordinance 499. Therefore, since the request complies with all code requirements, the staff has no objections to the proposed minor subdivision. Thank you. Is the petitioner here? If you please come to the podium and state your name and address and your reason for your request, sir. John Lindsay, uh, it's 364. Uh, 36420 Pine Street Extension in Pearl River, Louisiana, and it's 70452. And the reason you asked for this request, sir? Uh, I'm going to give a piece, one little piece of that to my son, and the other piece I'm going to try to sell to supplement my Social Security because I can't live off of Social Security, I found out after a couple of years. And since I'm getting over 70, you know, it's hard to, you know, be able to work, get a job, and be able to hold a job. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else in the public who wishes to speak in favor of the request? Is there anyone in the public who wishes to speak in opposition? Hearing none, I close it to the public and I bring it to the commission. Uh, Commissioner Willie. Yeah, I move for approval. Motion by Commissioner Willie to approve. Second. Second. Second by Commissioner Randolph. Commissioner Lauren. I have just one question. I want to make sure I'm reading this thing correctly. <coughs> it, will the, the barn be in parcel one? It looks like the... Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's just a barn area. Yeah, that will be in parcel one. Okay, it's separate from, okay, that's the only yeah. question I have. Thank you. Okay. Any further questions or comments of the commission? If not, we have a motion by Commissioner Willie to approve, second by Commissioner Randolph. Please vote. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Petitions and requests. A request to build on a buildable substandard lot of record located in Forest Glen subdivision, square 100, lot 1, Ward 7, District 7. Petitioner, Amanda DeMario. Parish Council District Representative, the Honorable Jacob Groby. This was postponed at the April 12, 2016 meeting. Staff? Uh, Mr. Chairman, may I ask uh, if, the, if you could request that the petitioner is here this evening? I don't see the petitioner here. Uh, I, last month, as you remember, it was postponed because the petitioner failed to show up at the meeting. Well, I, t I indicated I would try to contact her when I went back and looked at the files. Because of this particular kind of a process is not really codified, so it's kind of we provide, uh, they, we require some minimal information for them to get on our agenda. Unfortunately, when I went back and looked at the documentation, there was no contact information for this individual. No phone number, no address, nothing. So I would suggest that because she has not shown up for a second time, and I did discuss this issue with her, that the chance of her getting her request may be very difficult or, or you know, to, to, to get. She may have just decided not to, to give up on it and not try to come to our meeting. So under, those scenario, under that circumstance, I would suggest that the commission go ahead and deny it. She always has the right in some future date to come back and reapply and get back on our agenda. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone in the public who wishes to speak in favor of the petition? Anyone who wishes to speak in opposition? This time we close it to the public and we bring it to the commission. Commissioner Davis. I'll make a motion to deny. Okay. Motion by Commissioner Davis to deny. 
second by Commissioner Drum. Commissioner Dougherty. Just a, a question, and it's procedural. Uh, we would basically have the same thing if we postponed indefinitely as a denial, uh, and then she ever decided to come back, then uh, it could be brought back. We could bring it back uh, for a future agenda. Uh, the difference being a denial, um, and correct me from Commissioner Richard, the parliamentarian, that a denial will then move it forward to the, to council. the council. Right. And the council then can can address it. If we postpone indefinitely, it will not make it to the council. Right, but but she will have to show up in order to get it to the council and get it something done if that's what she really wants to do. Correct. Uh, in, in addition, might I add, as you know, if you do an indefinite you know, it, uh, who knows what the codes and regulations are going to be down the line if she comes back six months a year. That's not our now. problem. I know. But I'm just saying, it, it, a denial is clean. It lets her come back and file application again before this commission uh, if she wants to move forward at a later date. Okay. Commissioner Davis? Uh, yeah, I just uh, want to keep it the same. Okay. Thank you. Any further comments? or questions of the, of the commission. If not, we have a motion, pardon? We have a motion by Commissioner Davis to deny, second by Commissioner Drum. I will remind the commission that a yes vote is for denial. Please vote. Motion to deny carries. <coughs> Entering the Tammany Trace, we have none. Revocations, closing review, we have none. Resubdivision review, we have none. Dormant subdivision review, we have none. Tentative subdivision review, we have none. Preliminary subdivision review. Uh, I would note that uh, counsel for the petitioner has asked the commission and the chair will uh, yield to his request that we will be reading both preliminary subdivision review 2016-246-PP as well as final subdivision review 2016-246-FP together. We will review them together. However, the commission will vote on them separately. 2016-246-PP, North Park, Phase 4B, Ward 3, Ward 1, District 5. Developer owner, Greengate North Park, LLC. Engineer, Deep South Design Group. Parish Council District Representative, the Honorable Reichard Taladano. As well as a final subdivision review, 2016-246-FP. North Park, Phase 4B, Ward 3, Ward 1, District 5. Developer owner, Greengate North Park, LLC. Engineer, Deep South Design Group, Parish Council District Representative, the Honorable Reichard Taladano. Staff. This project received preliminary approval March 10, 2015. However, no work order was issued with one, within one year of approval. Therefore, resubmittal is required. The preliminary plans and hydrologic study have been reviewed by this office and an inspection of the site was made. It's recommended that the preliminary submittal be approved. No maintenance obligation is required since this is an extension of a private road. Mandatory developmental fees will be required when the building permit is submitted in accordance with Ordinance 499 since no public hearing was held prior to January 1, 2005. And the final subdivision staff report comments. This subdivision received final approval on March 10, 2015. However, no work order was issued within one year of approval. Therefore, resubmittal is required. No work has commenced at the site. Since the infrastructure has not been completed, the developer is requesting that a performance obligation be established for a period of six months. See attached engineer's estimate of probable cost dated 1-15-15 from the developer's engineer, Mr. Alex Williams, Deep South Design Group. Should the Planning Commission Approve the request for final approval. A performance obligation will be required for the infrastructure in the amount of $630,119 for a period of six months. See attached estimate of probable cost. The staff has reviewed the engineer's cost estimate and agrees with the contents. The subdivision plats can be signed upon issuance of a work order. 
No warranty obligation is required at this time and will be established upon the completion of the infrastructure and release of the performance obligation. Since the developer has no end users, mandatory developmental fees are not due prior to signing the subdivision plat, but are due upon building permit application. Thank you. Mr. Shane. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Jeff Shane of the Jones Fussell Law Firm in Covington. On behalf of the developer and petitioner in this case, North Park uh, Greengate, um, we bring to you this evening um, the same case that you approved in March of 2015, which allows for the creation of a one-lot phase uh, to the North Park development. Um, we have a user that is under contract that will be taking title in June to what is lot one of phase 4B. It's 5.1 acres. Um, that user will be constructing uh, an approximate 225 unit apartment complex upper end uh, in the development. Um, the purchaser was unable to put his project and financing together to close within the one year period of time that we had to pull the work order. Hence, it expired. And for that reason, we come back to you this evening requesting both preliminary and final approval, obviously contingent upon us posting a bond to ensure that the infrastructure will in fact not only be constructed properly, but timely completed. So this request and hopefully your approval of this process will allow the developer to extend and construct the road and other infrastructure at the same time the user begins the construction of its project. The two will be simultaneous. Uh, and that's uh, it in a nutshell. Uh, if any of you have any questions, I'll be glad to address them at this time. Thank you, Mr. Shane. Is there anyone else in the public who wishes to speak in favor of the request? Is there anyone who wishes to speak in opposition? Hearing none, I close it to the public and I bring it to the commission. Commissioner Richard. Thank you. A uh, couple of questions, one for staff first. Um, did we not have to do a performance um, obligation when we approved it? No, the first ago? time there was a performance obligation. So Everything is exactly the same. It just, their one year expired, so they had to come back and get okay. approval again. And the only, first of all, I think this is, obviously I understand this happens in business and I'm, I'm, I support, but my question is, um, the performance obligation was calculated based on numbers from 2015, I think early, over a year ago. Um, has cost going up that would require us to consider a higher performance obligation or do we think we're the developers engineer felt that the same cost estimate was uh, appropriate and so that's what staff recommended well that's fine I accept that and make a motion to approve the preliminary because I think we have to do them individually correct uh, so we have a motion by Commissioner Richard to approve the preliminary Commissioner Lauren <clears throat> real quick question Ms. Shane Yes, sir. Jeff, I'm getting old and I'm, my hearing is getting bad, but how many, did you say it was an apartment complex for yes. how many units? 225 plus or minus. It's, and if I'm reading this right, it's 200, that'd be 225 on 6.148 acres? I think actually the lot is 5.1 acres itself. Will that, will that be yes, sufficient sir. to provide the parking? Yes, sir. The first thing that we had done at, uh, with the commission, the zoning commission, was we sought the rezoning of this parcel um, either in late 2014 or early 2015 to make sure that the zoning classification would support the project and we submitted a site plan to the Department of Development for review to make sure the necessary parking, landscaping and other elements would in fact fit. In fact, right now, our building, the building permit for the project has been filed and is going through review and consideration. Commissioner Richard. Well, I apologize. Uh, we have a mo 
No, I did not. Thank you, Commissioner Casabon. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Richard to approve, second by Commissioner Casabon. There's no further questions. Please vote. Motion carries. You're welcome. That is for preliminary. That is for 2016-246-PP. Uh, we have been presented with 2016-246-FP. I now bring that to the commission. Commissioner Richard. Motion to approve. By Mr. Oh, Lauren. By Commissioner second. Lauren. Second by Commissioner Richard. Uh, any further comments? We have a motion by Commissioner, Re uh, excuse me, Lauren to approve, second by Commissioner Richard. Please vote. Motion carries. Thank you. Preliminary subdivision review 2016-249-PP, Abita River Park. Ward 3, District 2, Developer Owner, Abita River Park, LLC. The Engineer, Kelly McHugh and Associates, Inc. Parish Council District Representative, the Honorable Dennis Sharp. Staff. Preliminary plans and hydrologic study have been reviewed by this office and an inspection of the site was made. It's recommended that the preliminary submittal be approved subject to the following and no work order be issued until all punch list items have been resolved. On the subdivision plat, remove the culvert schedule. Item B, 20-foot drainage servitude must be private since they do not conform to parish standards. Item C, restrictive covenant number 10 states 30-foot instead of 60-foot, which will require a waiver from the Planning Commission. Under paving and drainage, item D, needs slope stability study for levee around pond. Under sewer and water, item E, plans and specifications for the construction of the project's water distribution lines and sewage collection lines have not yet been approved by the Department of Health and Hospitals as required. No work order will be issued until the submitted plans and specifications are approved by DHH. Item G, a full set of plans and DHH permit application need to be submitted to Utilities, Inc. for review, comment, and approval. Item H, the water and sewer line extensions along Harrison Avenue need to be revised to account for the required left turn lanes. Traffic and signage, item I, plans for the subdivision do not include plans for left turn lanes on Harrison Avenue. Item J, the developer is required to install left turn lanes on Harrison Avenue at both of the subdivision entrances. The turn lanes shall conform to DOTD standards and requirements, including but not limited to storage lane lengths. The cost of these turn lanes, including any right-of-way cost, is the sole responsibility of the developer and will be in addition to any mandatory impact fees that are assessed. General, item K, satisfactorily address all concerns of Gravity Drainage District 5. Department of Development and Planning, running. Thank you, Jay. Uh, comment 1, section 40-074, Parish and Forest Subdivision Restriction of Covenants, paragraph H of Subdivision Ordinance number 499, requires that driveways on corner lots must set back at least 60 feet from the property corners. This requirement was established in order to promote traffic safety. Therefore, since the developer is requesting only 30-foot setbacks from the corners, <coughs> excuse me, corners, uh, corners on the corner lots, a waiver of these regulations would be required. Comment 2. As a condition for planning a development, green space and or amenities are required within the development pursuant to parish code. The developer has submitted a document to the staff, the Recreational Development Plan, that states a timetable for the development of the proposed amenities that includes an active component, which is a half-court basketball court, and a semi-active component, a walking path. The staff is concerned that the completion of the active amenity, <coughs> excuse me, uh, is based on a completion of phase two. Uh, see recreational development plan uh, letter attached to your to the staff report. Uh, the staff has already taken uh, the position that the active recreational component uh, be completed prior to the first occupancy permit being issued within the subdivision. That way, the homeowners will always have an active amenity to utilize in the event that uh, in the event that the market and our sales for the development slow, or in worst case scenario, that the development goes stagnant or in receivership. 
For those reasons, the staff recommends that, an, that the active amenity be completed prior to the issuance of the first occupancy permit. Comment three, the developer is proposing a natural surface walking path within the develop, uh, development. The staff recommends that either an aggregate, rubberized, or hard surface material be used instead. The staff recommends approval subject to the developer complying with all staff comments. Furthermore, if the commission decides to grant preliminary subdivision request, a waiver of the regulations are required relative to the corner setback provision pursuant to section 40-100 waiver of regulations of subdivision ordinance 499, which requires a two-thirds majority vote of the full membership of the commission, eight members, in order to grant said waiver. Thank you. Mr. Marone. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Paul Marone on behalf of Abita River Park, LLC. Um, I'd like to walk through the staff comments, um, first identifying for you those items which uh, have already been addressed, then coming back and addressing um, the items that require a little bit more discussion and explanation. Uh, but first, if you'll, if you'll look at your staff comments, um, under the subdivision plat, uh, items A and B uh, have been addressed and the plat has already been revised uh, and submitted to your staff. Um, item C, we are requesting a waiver uh, on uh, the corner lots with regards to the driveway length from that corner, and I'll explain that momentarily. With regards to paving and drainage, um, the need for a slope stability study, uh, that study was uh, required or brought to our attention last week. That is an atypical request. We're not used to seeing that request. Um, however, we are in the process of complying with that request. In order to do the study, we had to do borings, uh, soil borings. That boring company has been identified, they have been engaged, and uh, they are working on that. So as soon as we have those borings back, uh, we should have the study to Mr. Watson and his office within the next several weeks. With regards to sewer and water, uh, we have submitted the plans to the Department of Health and Hospitals for review. We've also submitted the plans to Utilities, Inc. for their review, and uh, we have revised the drawings to show the line extensions along Harrison, and we have accounted for the turn lanes. So that item has been addressed. With regards to traffic and signage, each of those items have also been addressed on the plans that have been submitted to your staff. Uh, with regards to the general item, uh, the gravity drainage district number five, we have already submitted our drainage plans to the Gravity Drainage District. Uh, we are waiting on their review and their comments, and we recognize that whatever uh, their concerns are, should they have any, that we'll be obligated to satisfy those and present evidence to your staff that we have satisfied those. So we have no problem complying with whatever Gra Gravity Drainage District number five might suggest. Um, planning. Um, the first item on planning deals with the setbacks, and as you may have recall, uh, you've seen this request a number of times. And the reason that you're seeing the request tonight, as you've seen in the past, is that where we have lots that are um, smaller in width than the 60 feet, it makes our ability to comply with the 60-foot length impossible. Um, here, we have such a situation. We have a PUD with lot sizes that have been approved. However, if you look at the width of those lots, the lot itself is not always 60 feet in width from the corner, which means we can't possibly uh, meet the requirement. Otherwise, there would be no driveway. There'd be no way to access some of these lots. So it is for those, that reason uh, that we're requesting the reduction to 30 feet. We believe that that is adequate. We also believe that it will uh, provide for the necessary distance so that there can be safe ingress and egress to these corner lots. In regards to the recreation plan, um, we understand uh, Mr. Keller's concern. Our, our focus uh, has always been with regards to the installation of these active amenities, that we don't get them out there too far in advance of having residents to keep an eye on them. What we have seen in the past is that where we have amenities, whether they're swing sets or basketball courts or whatever they may be, if we get them out there and there's nobody living in the subdivision, they become an attractive nuisance and they end up being destroyed or damaged and so forth. Um, so we, we don't have any objection to um, uh, complying with Mr. Keller's comment, um, save one minor item. He has suggested that we have uh, the amenity in 
by the first occupancy, we would respectfully request that, that he and you consider uh, giving us till the fifth certificate of occupancy, not phase two, but just to get five residents out there uh, so there's enough coming and going where maybe um, there will be enough people to keep an eye on that amenity. Uh, but we are fully prepared to do it uh, within phase one and uh, would ask your consideration that the trigger be before the fifth certificate of occupancy is listed. Um, finally, with regards to the natural surface walking path, um, you may recall uh, in your capacity as the Zoning Commission, you approved the PUD plan where it was identified that it would be a natural surface walking path. We would respectfully request that it remain a natural surface walking path. First, this path, if you will look at it, goes through a large area of green space, which is a sensitive area. This is an area uh, that approaches the river. Uh, we have set this area aside because of its sensitive nature, and uh, we would rather not have any hard surface uh, or aggregate or rubberized material in this area. In addition, you will notice that the walking path goes along the edge of the retention pond. Your engineering staff has suggested that certainly in that area as adjacent to the pond that they would rather not have hard surface or aggregate in that area. So. Uh, for those reasons, we would respectfully request that it remain natural. Uh, we uh, have no problem uh, committing and being obligated to keep it mowed, to have it delineated by appropriate signage uh, so that the residents um, will know where it is, be able to follow it, uh, and be able to enjoy it. But we just don't believe that having rubberized aggregate or hard surface on this walking path um, would be necessary, and we believe that our request is reasonable to keep it as it was identified on the PUD plan. So in conclusion, I know that's a mouthful for you to digest, but if we look at what is truly outstanding, um, there is very little. All of the plat modifications have been done. The submission of the plans to um, the various agencies, including Gravity Drainage District 5, have been done. Um, we are requesting the waiver for the reasons stated on the side, uh, the access to the corner lots, and um, we have requested your consideration uh, for the fifth occupancy permit uh, as the trigger on our uh, on our construction of the amenities. And finally, with regards to the natural surface walking path, we would ask your consideration there as well. I'll be happy to answer any questions that any of you may have on any of these items, uh, but we would respectfully request your approval uh, subject to our completion of these final punch list items. Thank you, Mr. Marone. Is there anyone else in the public who wishes to speak in favor of the request? Is there anyone in the public who wishes to speak in opposition to the request? Seeing none at this time, we close it to the public and bring it to the commission. Commissioner Davis. Paul? Yes, sir. This is a PUD, correct? It is a PUD, yes. Well, because it is a PUD and because in PUDs we like to have diversity of lot size, is there any way you could take these corner lots and increase their size a little bit so that they would at least meet this 60-foot uh, this uh, corner lot? I mean, you um, take like lots 59 and 80 and maybe combine them with 60 or 79. I'm just saying, you know, I'm going to have a hard time to give you a waiver from 60 feet to 30. I understand about how it's a PUD, mm -hmm. and I understand we approved it and stuff like that, uh, but I'm going to have a hard time with that. That's just one suggestion. There's really not an option for us to change the lot layout. Um, that was identified on the PUD, and this is a request that, that Anytime you have had a garden home section in areas, you've had this request because otherwise there, it's just physically impossible for us to meet it. Um, in this instance, uh, there are a, a few locations where it would apply, um, uh, namely uh, in the garden home lots in, in the center primarily. Um, but um, I would respectfully suggest that a waiver on that item is something that you've seen a lot of it's been granted numerous times and it does not cause a safety concern yeah it's just that in this design here there's a heck of a lot of corners do you agree with that 
uh, there, there, are, there are a number of corners. I wouldn't say that they're, they're uh, more an unusual amount, but there are, there are a number of corners here. Uh, but, of course, this lot layout was, uh, went through a great deal of scrutiny, residents, council, commission, staff, uh, through the PUD process. Okay. Um, and this is the product that, uh, that we came out with. I don't, I don't have a problem with uh, leaving the, uh, the, the, the paths to uh, natural. That, uh, and as long as they're cut and they're labeled, that's fine. And I see something about restricted co the covenant 10 would have to be changed, of course, uh, would have to stay. And that, that's what you're asking the variance for. That's correct. That, would, that deals with the waiver issue. Wouldn't restrictive covenant number 12 have to be changed too as well? Since the drainage servitude to can't be maintained by St. Tammany Parish if it's private? Uh, no, my, uh, my understanding is that these, these facilities will be constructed um, to the parish specs and maintained by the parish. So the drainage servitude they were talking about earlier is okay? Question, Mr. Uh, no, as far as I know, th it needs, the 20-foot drainage servitude must be labeled private since it doesn't conform to the parish standards as so, is. So I'm does sorry. that mean restrictive covenant number 12 would also have to be changed? I don't have the restrictive covenants yes, in front it, of me. It says the drainage servitude and retention and retention pond area shall be maintained by St. Tammany Parish. So we'll, would we maintain the drainage servitude if it's a private servitude? No. No, that would be the HOA. So then that has to change. On the plan. Well, there is no waiver for that, though. There, there's no request for waiver on number 12. I'm just... Right, they're just going to have to they change just it. They have to change that in right. the restricted covenants, right? Right. right. That, that's all I'm asking. Right. But the maintenance would have to be done by the homeowners association. Right. So I'm just saying. I mean, I, I know we don't enforce restrictive covenants, but you said <laughs> something yeah. earlier. It, about it, it appears to be inconsistent. You're, okay. you're, I think Mr. So Davis you, you is can correct. correct that then. Yes. Okay. Yes. That that appears to be in, inconsistent. And let's see what else. So it's okay. Going, you're going to change it to. Y Yes, to make it consistent that it would uh, be maintained by the homeowners association. Homeowners association. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Casabon. Yes, I guess this is the most detailed um, drainage thing I'm looking at. The where the walking path is and where we have the retention pond, is that the schematics for? the drainage it's an outlet there like culberts or uh what are they calling it um this catch basin thing <coughs> is open right here i'm sorry this right there which um uh, miss casbon are you looking at the make sure i'm looking at the correct map so i don't answer you incorrectly Just that to put it on the record so everybody can hear what we're talking about. I was going to say if, uh, if uh, Mr. Marone uh, or Mr. McHugh could put on yes. the record what, what this uh, discussion has been. Had a very, very good question, uh, and she's looking at the drainage plan um, in the outfall for the pond. Um, as, as drawn on the plan, it shows the outfall coming out um, right next to the, um, the walking path, and her, her concern was... Um, if we have the outfall basically flowing over the path, is that going to create a problem for the path, for the use of the path, for, for children, and so forth? And as Mr. McHugh pointed out, 
uh, it's a very good point and that what we will do is we will extend that outfall pipe. Basically, we will culvert to the south side, excuse me, to the north side of the path so that where the water lets out will be beneath on the other side of the path and we won't have those issues. And that it's closed. I, I can't picture it, I guess. And I, I picture kids walking around playing, going in it or getting stuck in it or, you know, you know kids. So, but That's correct. It'll, okay. it'll be built in a manner where it doesn't create okay. a safety concern. Very, very good question, Ms. Casbon. Commissioner Casbon, does that answer your question? Yes, yes. Great. Yes. Commissioner Dougherty. Paul, uh, talking about things that the Homeowners Association is going to have to maintain. Yes. Like drainage and so forth. Are you, is there going to be mandatory Homeowners Association dues to cover this? Yes, there will be um, detailed restrictive covenants that will call for a mandatory homeowners association. Uh, that mandatory association will also establish mandatory dues for each lot owner um, based on the need to collect the funds to keep up the infrastructure, including the pond. All that will be in place before the first lot is sold, so each buyer takes it subject to those provisions. Okay. Well, I go along with Jimmy on, on this 30-foot uh, difference between 60 foot it just uh, and I understand the comment that, that you're making that there's a number of uh, lots there and uh, because it is garden homes it makes it very difficult <coughs> the fact that there's not uh, lots of more than 60 foot one second mr. Darty if I okay. could uh, Mr. Darney, that was a very compelling statement, and we will withdraw our request for a waiver on the side driveways based on uh, your concern and Mr. Davis's. Okay, thank you. And under the subdivision plat, item B, that is now going to comply with the parish <laughs> standards. It's not going to be private. Is that what I understood you to say? No, I'm, I'm sorry. It, um, it will be it will be private, but it will be labeled as private, whereas now it is not labeled as private. Uh, okay, to, to staff then, is this going to be an adequate drainage? Excuse me, I'm sorry. The uh, item on the subdivision plan, item B, the 20-foot drainage servitude must be uh, private as it doesn't conform to the parish standards. Is Correct. 20 foot going to be adequate? Uh, it should be adequate, but it's it doesn't meet parish requirements, so it can't be a parish maintained. Okay, but it's adequate. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. <coughs> Commissioner Randolph? Yes, Mr. Marone. Yes, sir. A paving and draining, did I understand you to say that um, there's some more, you, know, you guys are working on it, there's some soul boring that needs Yes, we, uh, the requirement under paving and drainage for a slope stability study um, was brought to our attention last week. And in order to do the study, Mr. Uh, McHugh needs to have soil borings so that uh, that is upon which the study will be based. Uh, those borings have been, um, we've contracted with the, the boring company and we hope to have that in the next week and the report within the next week or two. question you mentioned that instead of uh, the permit being submitted or that it, you wanted to have at least five residents or four, five F five five was uh, was our our request for the trigger to require us to have the amenities constructed okay. the active amenities and your reason basically was for security purposes? Correct, correct. And I can understand that one word you didn't use is because of theft, but that's, <laughs> that's one, one of the reasons too, right. I understand that. Um, and last, Ms. Manil, if you don't mind, um, can you explain why you would, or the difference, 
the difference between the natural service walk path and what is being recommended by the staff hard service material, rubberized hard service material. Well, what, basically. What's the difference in what the staff are recommending that and you keeping it natural? Is it a cost thing? Um, c cost is part of it from our standpoint. I guess the, the, the issues for us, one is the cost. Um, because as you see, we have some pretty extensive walking paths throughout this development. Um, but I would tell you that uh, equally as important on this project um, are the, the sensitive nature of the area where these paths are located. Um, if you look at all these paths are located in the large green space area between the edge of where we're developing and flowing down to the river. And one of the reasons that we left this area alone is because of its sensitive nature, uh, because of wetlands, uh, because of the runoff and so forth. And so given that, we don't believe that putting the rubberized material or a, a paving or even an aggregate would make sense in that area. So cost is one, but the sensitive nature of the area would be the other major factor on our end. Commissioner Lauren. Thank you. Paul, looking at the drainage plan, compliment whoever put this plan together. It's probably the most comprehensive one I've seen. <clears throat> but I want to make sure I'm reading it correctly. And I'm looking at the, the drainage plan. <clears throat> and it's in the, the different colors. The, the light tan that outlines around the back side of the retention pond. Okay. In essence, that becomes a levee. That is correct. That is the, that is the levee. All right. Now, <clears throat> my concern is if, if that's a levee and it's at 16 feet and you've got some of the lots between 20 and 35 <clears throat> that are as low as 14 feet, 13 feet, it could become a bowl. Pardon? The orange area, the darker tan, is the land that we're going to raise the 16. So we're not going to have any land okay, that's you, going to be lower than the levee. Okay, what I'm saying, okay, the, the, darker, the darker tan is going yeah. to be raised up? To 16. To 16. 16. Okay, I, I was not reading that, Kelly. I'm sorry. I didn't, if, didn't if, understand if you looked that. out on the cross section, you can see how I'm, the orange I'm looking at that. raising that to 16. So... That would be the case. If we wouldn't raise that land, it would be a bowl. But it would be a gonna, bowl. That's what yeah. that was scaring right. the hell out of me. But because as we're sh shown on the detail, we're raising all <laughs> that that little bit of land to 16, so that nothing will be below the top of the land. Well, understanding how these covered things work for the retention pond where it drains out, as close as it is to the river, it could drain in if the river gets high enough. Sure. And if if that were to happen and that land were not raised then all of those lots, they're, they're in flood zone A. And it, I just don't want anybody to think that, that we're approving. Right. And, and those, as Mr. McHugh said, that area will, will be raised under the no net. Uh, we're not bringing in fill, but with the excavation that's going to take place for the pond, we'll be able, we'll be lowering that elevation. We'll be using some of that to bring these areas up so that we don't have a bowl effect. You know, this is one of the advantages of having you all, the petitioners, here so we can ask these kind of questions and we can understand what the devil we are proving. Right. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. Commissioner Richard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I got a question for staff. Uh, Jay, particularly, there's, uh, as Paul indicated, on it's kind of an extensive list. Um, I don't know if this is normally this extensive of what needs to be done at preliminary, but that being said, and in nearly all the cases, he commented, uh, Mr. Marone commented that submittals have been made. Um, and obviously, if we go to approval, we're approving it subject to all of this being in compliance, which means it puts it back on staff to say, yes, everything is as we expect it to be. Have you taken a look at any of these submittals? 
We've reviewed them twice and provided comments, and that's what the staff analysis report was based off of, and we have not reviewed them for the third time coming into this meeting. Okay. Uh, so if we make uh, recommend recommendations for approval, it's subject to, again, your approval? Yes. Okay. I have no further questions. Just to summarize where we are, because at this point, um, Commissioner Casabon, do you have a? You go ahead and summarize. Okay. I was just going to make a motion. Um, where we are at this, we do not have a motion as of yet. However, based and see if we have this correct before I go to staff for some comments as well, that uh, Mr. Marone, on behalf of the petitioner, has withdrawn the request for a variance or a waiver, excuse me, for the 30-foot setback. Mr. Marone further asked to uh, propose that the act of amenity would come into effect after the fifth uh, certificate of occupancy would be granted. And Mr. Marone further asked that the natural surface walking path be approved. So as such, if those were to come into play, we would no longer require if the staff, if the uh, commission does wish to make a motion to approve. We will not require a waiver, two-thirds majority. So the motion, that's just to summarize where we stand on this uh, request. Staff, you would ask for some comments as well. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yeah, a few comments. Uh, again, we do applaud the developer for agreeing to meet the 60-foot uh, setback from corner lot. That is a traffic safety issue and of a great concern to us. So we are very happy they have agreed to that. Uh, they will need to put a, an additional uh, restrictive covenant on the plat uh, per our regulations that state that fact that the 60-foot the setback is, is required on corner lots. Uh, secondly, <clears throat> the staff also has no issue with uh, Mr. Marone's uh, proposal on behalf of the developer on the fifth occupancy permit being issued for the basketball court. We think that's a very, very reasonable request so that we don't have any issues with that. However, the, uh, the third issue is what we still would like the, the, the commission to consider. Uh, I, I believe that the, the, the commission needs to consider what the wishes of the potential residents of these subdivisions would want. Uh, as far as a, a walking slash jogging path. Uh, you know, a natural surface sounds nice, but basically a natural surface is one of two things. It's either a grass path or, or dirt. Uh, the problem with a grass path is that obviously during heavy rains, people aren't going to be able to use it because the path's going to be soggy and wet. Uh, if the path is overutilized being a grass path, it turns into dirt, and again, during a heavy rain, turns into mud. Uh, those are the concerns that we have, you know, for, for the residents. If the developer were to take any of the number of other options, which again is an aggregate type surface, which could be either some type of, of uh, limestone or gravel that could be compacted into a smoother, you know, more pliable surface, some type of rubberized material similar to the uh, track and field ovals that they have made of that type of rubberized material, uh, some type of, of uh, astroturf, you know, artificial grass, which can be a soft path and also can, can stand weather, you know, the weather. Uh, and, of course, with the hard surface materials, there could be uh, an asphalt. There could be a three-course treatment of, like, tar and gravel that could be compressed. Uh, and, of course, the last would be, uh, would be concrete. So we think the developer has some other viable options. Uh, I do understand that there may be a potential issue from our public works department regarding maintenance of the pond and where this path may or may go. Um, I would suggest that the, certainly the path uh, around the, the pension pond, the, the easement can simply be widened by five or ten feet and allow the path to be put on the extreme perimeter of the easement so that it would not affect the uh, workings of the P public works department uh, when they uh, maintenance the detention ponds. Um, so with that, that's, that's I just want to make those comments. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Casabon? Yes. Um, Paul, I see that they asked for that. The limestone, I would like to see something. I'm only basing this on the subdivision countryside on 1077. That is country, <laughs> and, and, and as what I can say, and that aggregate is still there. It, it's more or less in, and the path is very well um, seen. 
and it seems to work in a, in a natural you know situation that I would like to see some kind of a limestone or, or stone path there. I don't like the rubberized. I still have, mm -hmm. I don't know what's in that rubber when they, you know, the chemicals and stuff like that. I don't feel like that's a natural thing, but where um, some type of aggregate or like I said, the limestone, I would like to see on that, on the path. I can't uh, visualize that particular area having to maintain a path. I, I don't know what you would use. Like you said, with the grass growing up, what do y'all have? Y'all researched something and well, something I, new? I mean, our it, first to to do what we're uh, being asked to do with regards to either hard surfacing or aggregate. Um, and Mr. McHugh can speak to this a little bit further if you'd like. But I mean, we would have to go in and put a base in to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not just a matter of laying that on the ground. So that's bringing equipment in to an area that really equipment shouldn't be in, uh, that we don't want to put it in. Um, what we had intended to do, again, was to keep it mowed um, to the extent that there needed to be some type of material on top. Uh, we had intended to use wood, wood chips um, and to use kind of border material wood that you might see landscaping type uh, borders. That was, that was what we had intended to, to do to identify the path along with the signage. Um, so, you know, we would respectfully request that that be allowed. Um, certainly, we understand it's up to the purview of the commission and um, ultimately we'll, you know, we'll comply with whatever we need to do to, um, uh, to satisfy any requirements that you may put on us. But this is an area that um, I would respectfully suggest um, doesn't need aggregate hard surface or rubberized surface. I guess I just don't see that. As, uh, I mean, that's what I'm asking. Is there do y'all have new information on the landscaping that that would be a service, a, a type of service surface that would not have to be uh, maintained a lot? Um, well, the, the mowing. I mean, you're still going to have to get equipment and things in there too. Yeah, it would have to be to mowed. Um, and um, you, your maintenance besides the mowing would be um, if you're going to have, if you replace any of the wood chips on the surface uh, and or any of the landscape timbers. Well, would, the, the timbers would be minimal. Right. That would be a permanent thing is what I'm saying. But I think year, I think that's, all I know the mulch is I have to mulch every year. I mean, and, and that's an expense in itself. And. What Mr. McHugh and Mr. Coder are saying is that um, we, will, we will do the aggregate, but we will need to um, have some leeway with regards to the location of the trail so that we can meander around the wetlands that are there. Um, because we, we won't be able to put um, aggregate into the wetlands without tripping Correct. permitting issues and so forth, which would, would be a problem. Okay. So if there is, generally it will be laid out as you see it here. Correct. Um, but there may be some slight variations in order uh, to avoid the wetlands that are there. And if that is acceptable, uh, then we will, do, we will do aggregate surface. Ron? Yeah, like I said, that, that, that's fine. Some that's type okay of an you? aggregate is, is fine, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to approve. Subject to limestone or a, an aggregate uh, for the walking path. Um, we don't have to worry about the waiver um, and all the things that were stipulated. <laughs> I'll, I'll Bye. It, Bye. See if I can Chair state person. what your, your motion will be. Yes. Uh, the motion uh, would be amended what's in the package. One, we will no longer need to grant a waiver. Correct. Uh, because uh, petitioner will not request that. That they would place the act of amenity after the fifth certificate of occupancy would be issued that the developer will put in an aggregate for the act of or, or the uh, walking path and uh, i believe and, and, that's in that addition the, uh, the, the corrections in the, the correction and the restrictive covenants, covenants that the homeowners association would be responsible maintain. to maintain and also amend Five. the restrictive covenant where they list 
I believe they listed 30 foot from the corner and needs to correct. Be that would be six that would be they're not yeah. questioning the waiver anymore. That I'll would be the struck. Five occupants. Yeah, the fifth, uh, fifth they would be able to okay. put in the active amenity after the fifth. Okay, that's what my motion will be. We, we have a motion Subject by Commissioner Casabon to approve. Second. Second by Commissioner Randolph. Please vote. Motion carries. And, and again, as uh, Commissioner Lauren had stated, this, this shows, we would hope to the public, what happens when the petitioner and their representatives are here, their professional representatives particularly, how we can engage in a constructive dialogue that brings to the public what we feel is an appropriate and best uh, development. 2016-251-PP, Deer Crossing, Ward 1, District 1, Developer Owner, Deer Crossing, Development LLC, Engineer, Kelly McHugh and Associates, Inc., Parish Council, District Representative, the Honorable Marty Dean. Staff. Preliminary plans and hydrologic study have been reviewed by this office and an inspection of the site was made. It's recommended that preliminary submittal be approved subject to the following and no work order be issued until all punch list items have been resolved on the subdivision plat. Drainage and access servitude is needed for lots 66, 67, and 48, 49, a minimum of 20 feet. B, remove variance will be requested from the language of restrictive covenant number 10. On the paving and drainage plan, number C, need directional flow errors and green space behind the lots. Sewer and water, item D, plans and specifications for the construction of the project's water distribution lines and sewage collection lines have not yet been approved by the Department of Health and Hospitals as required. Item E, submittal of plans and specifications uh, and approval by DHH is required. F, provide TAM and utilities with a full set of plans and DHH permit application for review, comment, and approval. Item G, the water and sewer line extensions along Highway 25 need to be revised to account for the required right turn lane on 1085. Traffic and signage, item H. Plans for the subdivision did not include plans for a right turn lane on Highway 1085. I. The developer is required to install a right turn lane on Highway 1085 on its westbound approach to the subdivision entrance. A driveway permit from DOTD is required in order to install these improvements and the turn lane shall conform to DOTD standards and requirements, including but not limited to storage lengths. Costs of these turn lanes, including any right-of-way costs, is the sole responsibility of the developer and will be in addition to any mandatory impact fees that are assessed. Number three, no maintenance obligation is required since the subdivision fronts on a DOTD main maintained highway, 1085. Four, mandatory developmental fees will be required at final submittal in accordance with Ordinance 499 since no public hearing was held prior to January 1st, 2005. Planning. Thank you. Uh, these comments actually mirror exactly the comments that we had before. Uh, do you want me to read them into the record? The same comments. <clears throat> Number one is regarding the 60-foot setback on corner lots. Number two uh, is a uh, the condition for planning development green space are, are required. Uh, the, the recreational development plan states that timetable for the development the proposed amendment includes an active component. Um, I'm sorry, let me get to. I think it was the uh, the uh, uh, so therefore the staff is concerned that some uh, of the completion of the amenities are based on the occupancy of the first 25 homes and others prior to the final approval of phase two. The staff has always taken the position that at least one active recreational component be completed prior to the first occupancy. However, like I said, in this case, we don't have an issue if the developer does agree to the fifth occupancy permit for the, uh, the uh, for the for at least one of the active amenities, which in, uh, I believe includes the uh, swing set. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, so we don't have an issue with that if the, if the developer complies or, or is willing to comply with that. Third comment, as stated before, the developer is proposing a natural surface walking path. The staff hopes the developer will be willing to also put an aggregate path in uh, as, as well on this development. The staff recommends approval subject to complying with staff comments. And again, the waiver uh, paragraph only implies that, the, uh, applies that the developer does not decide to meet with a 60-foot corner setback issue. 
Thank you. The petitioner, Mr. Marone. Thank you, Mr. Manella. Paul Marone, uh, again, on behalf of Deer Crossing Development, LLC, as Mr. Keller said, um, there are uh, similar comments here that we had on our, uh, our last project. Um, a few differences, um, although uh, hopefully we can resolve some of the outstanding issues just as we did prior. Um, as with the last item, most of these uh, items on this punch list have been addressed. Um, in particular, both A and B under the subdivision plat have been addressed. Uh, the item under paving and drainage has been addressed. Um, items F and G have been addressed under sewer and water. And with regards to D, we have submitted the plans to DHH. Um, with regards to traffic and signage, both H and I have also been addressed. With regards to um, the driveway issues and the um, timing of the amenities and finally the walking path. Let's go down that road one more time. Um, let's start with the easiest one, the amenities. Um, we don't have a problem complying with Mr. Keller's suggestion and uh, we will have um, either the half court basketball court or the swing set picnic tables um, done by the time the first occupancy permit uh, is issued. We, we will be willing to do that. The first or the fifth? Fifth, if you would, uh, if, well, if, yeah. if you would uh, consider that in, in accordance with the discussion we had on the last case. We would be, be happy to do that. With regards to the, uh, the first item, which is the setbacks from the corner lots, if you will look at your plan, uh, part of the discussion I was having with Mr. McHugh while you, uh, staff was reading you the comments was to try to determine if we could do what we did on the last case and, and find a way to, to remove the request. And I think we, we can do that by and large, but there are a few cases on this plan that there's really no alternative. So I'd like to point a few of those out to you. And I would ask for your consideration on a limited waiver only on those lots that I'll point out and where I hope you'll agree that we really have no alternative. Um, if you look at the entrance drive, you will see that it is flanked by lots 1 and 73. Both of these lots have to access off of Spike Drive. They cannot access off of Deer Crossing Drive because there is a corresponding safety concern and you'll notice there that um, through staff suggestion and our concurrence, there's a no access servitude along that edge so that you don't have people pulling in and backing out on the main entranceway and potentially backing out into the highway. With that five foot no access servitude, then the only possible access is from the front of the lot on Spike Drive and these lots are only 35 feet in width. So we would respectfully ask for the waiver on those two lots. Then, I believe that the only other lot that we cannot comply is lot 81, which is at the corner of Trophy Lane and Spike Drive. What's that? Um, same thing on 81. The only access point we have is uh, on Spike Drive, and it's only 45 feet in width. So I believe that, that those are the only three that we need. Mr. Watson was asking about lot 107. I believe that lot 107, I guess the question on lot 107. It would actually still be measured from here, even though the last one, it's, it's measured from the intersection of the right of way of the two subdivisions. Okay, so we should, we should have enough room there. So yeah, I think we can comply with lot 107. So the only waiver we're requesting then would be as to lot 1 and 73 and lot 81. <coughs> Otherwise, we will, we will take the necessary steps to comply with, with the ordinance. Um, finally, the only other outstanding issue, I believe, is our walking path and the surface. And again, this is a little bit different than the last case. And here's, here's the difference. This is how it's distinguished. The 
walking path on this plan was not proposed by us. If you will think back to zoning, and I know you won't remember this particular case, but we had on our PUD plan all of the other amenities that you see. We had the ball field, we had the half court basketball court, and we had the picnic tables and um, swing set. With those amenities already proposed, we were in full compliance with the PUD. Staff came back and said, be a good idea if you put a walking path on there. So we said, sure, we'll be glad to put a natural surface walking path on there. It wasn't required, it really wasn't needed, but we agreed to do it at the urging of, uh, of Ms. Lambert and staff. Um, there are, the walking paths that we are showing, as you will see, they circle the entire retention pond, they circle the ball field, they circle the half court basketball area. This is a cost issue. This is a major cost issue for an item that really was, was an add-on and was not needed to meet the requirements of the PUD. We clearly had adequate amenities and active amenities here. So um, we would ask for some leniency on, on this case, on this item, given that history. When we did add it to the PUD, we added it as a natural surface walking path. From the very beginning, we proposed the natural surface, and we would ask for your consideration on, on, on this item because, um, again, it really was not required to meet um, the PUD ordinance, and it was an add-on at the end um, as a suggestion of staff, which was a good suggestion, and we're happy to do it, but we would ask not to incur the additional costs of having to do aggregate hard surface or rubberized surface. So with that said, uh, be happy to answer any questions that any of the commissioners or the staff may have with regard to these items. Mr. Chairman, may I make a yes. quick comment yes, regarding sir. the uh, the pathing? Yeah, I, I understand what Paul is saying, and, and I appreciate his comments, and what he says is, is correct. Uh, there has been, because of the PUD issue, we've had, we've had so many PUDs recently that have come in, a lot of them high-density PUDs. Uh, there's been a little bit of a disconnect between zoning PUD review and subdivision planning review. Um, we, so we, you know, so the staff is simply trying to be consistent that when these people come in with paths that they're consistent in what they're required to do. Again, natural path is something that we, as I just stated from the prior case, are not in favor of, but we understand, appreciate, you know, based on the zoning commission's uh, original approval of it being a natural path. So I guess under the circumstances, uh, the staff maybe would, would, would be lenient or certainly don't have a big issue, I guess, with putting the, uh, wa the a, a aggregate surface around the detention pond. However, would still suggest that a hard surface or aggregate material be put around the athletic field. Um, <clears throat> and having said that, in the future, there will no longer be any disconnect. All PUDs are now reviewed by the planning engineering staff at the, at, the, at, the, at the initial level. So th that should no longer be an issue. We will make those comments at the zoning level so that so these issues won't come up again. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the public who wishes to speak in favor of the request? Is there anyone in the public who wishes to speak in opposition to the request? Seeing none, I close it to the public and I bring it to the commission. Commissioner Randolph. Yes, uh, Paul. Yes, sir. Under the Department of Development Planning, item number one, uh, the last sentence there, therefore, this, the developer is requesting only 20 feet setback. Should that be 30 feet? I'm, I'm just trying to. I know we agreed to maintain the 60 with the exception of lots 1 and 73 and 81. Um, yeah, but is that a typo? No, I think we would we, we would need I think we would need 20, particularly on one and 73. Those lots, since these okay. are garden home type lots, those are only 35 feet in width. So, at 30 feet, it would put us into right five feet across, uh, from the property line. So we would we would need 20 on 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 each of those. On one and 73. Yes. And what about lot 81? Oh. 
we believe that even going 30 at lot 81 would present a problem. So we would need to have 20 uh, at that, that location as well. Even though it is at 45 feet? Uh, Mr. Chairman, could I ask Mr. Watson a question Certainly. regarding this? Certainly. Okay. Yes, Mr. Randolph, um, I believe that 30, we, we could make 30 work on lot 81. So we would need 20 on 1 and 73, but we would be, uh, we would be very comfortable with 30 feet on uh, lot 81. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Davis. Paul, if I was driving down 1085 and I turned into Deer Crossing Road and I'm going to one of my gardens homes, bear with me for a second. The lot you're having a problem with is 1 and 73. Correct. Why couldn't you kind of make lot 72 and 2 a little bit larger and just leave a little green space on the entrance coming in? Now, another, another suggestion. Lot number 81, and, take, and that would take care of this problem with the 20 to 60. Lot 81, what you could do is if you look at starting from lot 74, the next lot, 75, all the way to 80 or 40 foot width, you can make them 45 foot width and basically get rid of lot 81. So you, realistically, you'd be getting right. rid of three lots. But right. then you'd be in full compliance. Um, at, at this stage, if you recall, this, this property started out as a five uh, and we compromised to uh, to go to single-family residences as part of the PUD process to get away from the duplexes. So um, it's really not, we're really not in a position to be able to give up lots, particularly with the cost uh, that we're going to have to connect the central utilities. You may recall that we've got to bore the interstate, uh, sewer and water, to be able to connect to the utilities at, at a quite significant cost. So the lots that we have laid out, uh, we're really not in a position to be able to, to cut any of those because of those issues. Okay, well, I, you know, actually, I don't have a problem with lot 81 as is and leaving the rest of those lots the same size. But I do have a slight problem with, with the entrance in Deer Crossing Road. If someone turns directly on Spike Drive either way and they have to immediately take another right or left to get into their subdivision, you got people coming off at 1085, that could be a safety issue because that's the only way in and that's the only way out. Correct. That's correct. That's where I'm having a problem. I understand. It's those two lots. Again, I could get by with 81. I mean, it's a little bit around a corner and stuff, but it's got a parking, uh, a visitor parking area next to it. So probably people are going to be slowing up anyway. But as far as lot 73 and 71, I'm, I'm having a problem with those. Anything you do? I don't know that there's anything further we can do on those items. Mr. McHugh? Commissioner Lauren? I have a question and maybe getting away from that a little bit, but if you, if you look at the athletic field and you do away with the hard surface around and go to grass, <clears throat> then my concern if it's a ball field or if any bunch of it's a playground. Kids will be playing there. Lots 97 through 103 and lots 78 through 81 and then on down to 85. Their backyards, if it's all grass, mm -hmm. is all going to be one. I would, I would 
request that some consideration be given along that border and along the border behind 104 to 107 that some kind of shrubbery or some kind of distinction be planted along there so you don't have kids playing in somebody's backyard sure same thing with the basketball I mean if if there's nothing to distinguish between where the the kids are not going to know <laughs> You know, and if if they get out there and start playing ball, they're going to be in your backyard before you know it. Right. A, a few points on that, and it was good good comments. Um, one of the ways that uh, that we will delineate um, the back of those lots, particularly around the athletic field, and also lots 104 through 107. Um, in other developments where we have had lots that back up to these type areas. Um, we have required that there be fencing um, in the backyard, um, not six-foot privacy fences, but more or less um, uh, small picket-type fencing um, or wrought iron or aluminum or something like that that looks nice, that gives a break point, so that really it's a protection for the homeowner. That's what I'm looking <laughs> so for. that you don't have kids that end up increasing the width of their playing field by the backyard. So uh, we will have that in the covenants. And I think if I understood Mr. Keller's comments, he was suggesting that, that maybe as a compromise point, uh, leaving the walking path along the pond as natural, but maybe having some aggregate al around the, uh, the athletic field. And we, we would be okay with that. We could, we could comply with that. Commissioner Dougherty. The last comment uh, solved my question. Okay, let's see if we can get some type of summary here where we stand. <laughs> uh, regarding the lots, and uh, Mr. Moran, if you would. Paul, did you? I thought I heard you say there was four. Uh, it's 17381, and I thought you said there was a, a fourth. 70. Um, you know, is there's only three? there's only three. It's one. So, okay. the, the lots would be lot number eighty one would be a thirty foot. Correct. And then is it seventy one and seventy three, Paul, or one and seventy one? One and seventy three. One and seventy three. Okay. One and seventy three are twenties. Correct. 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 Okay. And then uh, a request or an uh, an acquiesce to to the fifth uh, certificate of occupancy to put in the active and a compromise on the walking path whereby around the pond would be natural and around the athletic field would be a hard or an aggregate? Aggregate, an yes, aggregate. sir. That's correct. That's correct. The, uh, the athletic field? And the basketball field. And the basketball field That's correct. would be aggregate? Okay. So, again, let's just get final clarification. Lots 1 and 73 would have 20-foot. Lot 81 would be 30. All others would be in full compliance to the 60. Uh, we would uh, allow for the active amenity on the fifth certificate of occupancy. And regarding the natural service walking path, that around the pond it would be natural. However, around the athletic field and the basketball would be an aggregate. Is that correct? That is correct, as summarized. Is there yes. any other? Clarifications or confirmations? Commissioner Randolph. Certainly. Paul, between lots 96 and 97, between lots 96 and 97, is that, I'm assuming that's a roadway, a drive. Yes, that is, that is correct. That's a drive to be able to access that visitor park, that limestone li visitor parking lot. And again, I'm going to ask uh, the Commission Secretary just to state into the record uh, the clarifications as we previously stated. Right now? Yes. So the corner lot driveways, the wave of the wave driveways. So um, 
the motion should be five certificate of occupancies required for the active amenities to be installed. The request of the waiver for the corner lot driveway requirement is lot one and lot 73 at 20 feet and lot 81 at 30 feet. With regard to uh, the type of material for the walking paths, there, um, the area around the pond be natural, the areas around the athletic field as well as the basketball court be some type of aggregate. Correct. And as such, we will still require a two-thirds majority vote if indeed we do get a motion to approve to grant the waiver relative to Watts 173 and 81. Commissioner Drum. Uh, Paul. I, I, I know it's been a long evening questioning you. For a That's okay. That's okay. Back to that um, between lots 96 and 97. That that drive right there, is that going to be limestone or yes. concrete? It is? Yes. And how are you going to differentiate between the athletic field and the visitor's parking? Um, well, that's a good question. We had uh, had not thought about that uh, since coming in this evening. We were proposing the field or the, the walking path to be um, natural. W one of the ways that we will be able to do that um, will be probably with the um, there's going to have to be some impediment some landscape timbers or something railroad ties that would end the parking area and start the walking path and field so there will be some type of uh, some type of impediment there so that the vehicles can't back into the walking path and the tree the field either railroad ties or landscaping timbers well that takes care of part of your aggregates right there too doesn't it Right. <laughs> Maybe we can get a bulk discount. Concrete, uh, parking heads down there for the visitors' parking? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Davis. I still think that as, as far as safety goes, this deer crossing with those two lots, one and 73, are going to cause a safety issue. I don't know how you're going to get a variance on, from this commission on that. I don't know. I just don't see how you're going to get that. I think something has to be done about those two lots. It's just, a, I mean, that is a one-way in and a one-way out, and it's a direct 90-degree turn. And, right. I, you know, I, well, I, I, don't know I guess I would, tell you. I would um, ask everybody to consider the practical application of the rule. Uh, we're talking about a difference of 40 feet. Uh, we're talking about two lots. And um, you're talking about two lots that will have um, minimal traffic. Even if you have somebody that is coming and going a lot through the course of the day, you may be talking about three trips, five trips. You're not talking about ten trips. And you're not talking about a whole slew of these lots. There's only two and you're only talking about a 40-foot difference. What is, the, what is the practical impact of losing that 40 feet on just two lots? I would submit to you it's negligible, in my opinion. Uh, and we do not believe that there will be any problem with the functionality of these two lots in getting in and getting out. But you do agree there will be a stop sign at Deer Crossing and Spike Drive when they enter. Is that correct? I do, yes. So somebody will have to stop, and then if a couple of yes. more cars come behind it, and then that person actually lives in lot one, they'll take it immediately right on Spike Drive, then probably have to take it immediately right to get into their parking lot. Correct. That's correct. And okay. so the next car, in the course of, course of that movement, though, the car behind it um, is, is going to have to stop. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I, so there'll be, there'll be, an, there'll be an opportunity. Um, for that movement to happen so that there's not conflict there. Okay. Um, Commissioner Richard, you had your light on. I just wanted to echo. I had the same exact concerns. Um, I'm very much for everything else, and I appreciate everything that uh, the, the, the petitioner, the developer, and this commission have worked on to try to get some resolution. That's the one thing I'm struggling with as well. So. Uh, I'm not sure I can support it. Commissioner Willie? Uh, just uh, 
add on to this. Paul, would it make any difference, and it might not make much difference, if you swapped the two lots where the 40-foot lot would be at the corner and 35-foot lot would be on the inside? Would that make much difference? Commissioner Willie, you're referencing 73 and 72? Right, and then one and two on the other side. The one's 35, no one's 40 foot. If you and would that five foot make a difference in this discussion? They would still need a waiver because the minimum requirement it's a 60 foot setback from the driveway on corner lots. So make, whether it was 35 or 40 foot wide lot, you're still going to have. Still need issue. a waiver. Would it make it any safer or any any recognition? Uh, but I it's mean, just five, five foot we're talking about. Yeah, it's not going to uh, make a whole lot of difference. Okay. I'd also like to uh, uh, indicate that. You, the, the, the motion, if they've made it on the waiver, also needs to be put in the restrictive covenant on the plat about the 60 foot with the exception of those lots mentioned. Thank you. Mr. Moran. Mr. Willie, to your, to your question, um, we were contemplating what you were talking about, and it actually um, brought up another possibility, which um, I don't know that it won't resolve the issue, but it may make the issue a little bit better. Um, and I'm asking Mr. Q to correct me if I misstate this at all. Uh, but, and, and Mr. Keller, you as well, we to make sure that I'm, we're going to stay in compliance and not create another problem. Um, as shown right now, Deer Crossing Drive, I think, has a width of 100 feet. And I believe that uh, we could do it at 80 feet and stay in compliance. If we did it at 80 feet, that would allow us to add an additional 10 feet to lot one and lot 73, that we still couldn't get the 60, but we could get the 30. We could get some additional space there uh, and get to the 30. And we would be willing to do that um, if that's something that the, the commission felt um, would help address their concerns and if staff did not see any objection to that. Mr. Kelly, you said on staff that would be okay? Yeah, that's fine. The, the actual requirement of width for the right-of-way entrance is 80, not 100. And, and Paul, following up with what I was saying, if you swap those two lots around, where that would give you another five feet, you'd be even closer. Right. Is that a possibility? Yeah. It'd, be, it'd be lot 73, kiss me, put it on that lot. <clears throat> and lot one would be 42. We can do that, and that would that would give us another five feet. Um, so we and, and we would be willing to do that. We we would change the uh, the width of lots one and seventy three basically to the forty foot lot. So the adjacent lots would then come down to the thirty five. They would not be on the corner. So that would give us some additional space there as well. So would it be appropriate then that lot one seventy three and eighty one would have at least thirty feet? Correct. That's correct. Uh, propose that to the commission. Um, Commissioner Lauren? Well, everything has a swap off. <clears throat> when you narrow down Deer Crossing Drive in order to widen those lots, <clears throat> I'm speaking of our, my personal subdivision I live in now. We're constantly battling the brick trucks, the concrete trucks, and all the other trucks trying to come into a narrow driveway, and they're demolishing all the landscaping, the brick works, the stone work, and everything out there. They, they just can't make the turn when you get to too narrow. And I'm sure we meet the 80-foot width. So what I'm saying is we might... We might gain on one end, but we're, we need to recognize we're going to lose on the other end. Um, Mr. McHugh just pointed out that the, that the radius 
um, that you see here is a highway radius, so it's um, better able to handle uh, the large trucks turning than maybe you would in your subdivision where it, it doesn't have that same radius. This okay. is a, a, a much more accommodating radius. So then we will amend just where we stand at this point that lot 173 and 81 will have at least 30 feet for those three lots. Is that correct? Correct. Ms. That's correct. Okay. Everything else remains the same. Mr. Davis. Now, does that mean lots 1 and 73 will be, both be 50 foot in width? They will be 50 foot in width um, because you're reducing your 100 foot 10, drive into 80, which gives them both 10 and correct. you're switching 72 to 73 yes. and 2 to 1. That is correct. And even with a 50 foot width, they'd still need to have a variance yes. yeah, for turns, correct? The variance would have to be 30 feet. Yeah, it, the uh, the waiver would be for 30 foot setback from the corner for lots 173 and 81. And in addition to doing that, they don't need the waiver to narrow the right of way width that they right. are going to, to have at the entrance. 80 foot is the minimum right of way width, and uh, I don't have it in front of me, but they're saying that right now, the way the subdivision is developed, they have 100 foot wide. Yeah. Subdivision entrance right away, they can reduce it to 80, and that'll give uh, 10 more additional feet for each lot. And then I guess they were talking about switching it from a 35 and a 40 See, foot lot to so so 15 the, extra feet. The on typical each lot. driveway width is 16 to 20 feet. So obviously, you've got a 50 foot lot, and you have to take that amount into account. You basically need that 30 feet. Right, right. It's just that we're doing so much, you know, fine line on this stuff, and we still have to give a variance. Yeah. Right. Where it, could be taken, where it could be taken care of all, you know, automatically. <clears throat> if, if one in seventy-three were to be green space, <laughs> we've come a long way, commissioners. Thank you for your patience this evening. Compromises. <laughs> Commissioner Richard. I'll move to approve, subject to everything you wrote down. <laughs> Second, <laughs> unanimous. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Richard to approve subject to the qualifications as stated by our secretary, which are, state for the record, please. Five certificate of occupancies before the active amenities are installed. The waiver for the 30-foot setback for the corner lot driveways will apply to lot 1, 73, and 81. <coughs> Um, with regard to the walking path, the area around the pond be natural, the area around the athletic field and the basketball court be aggregate, and to add in a comment regarding the corner lot driveway waiver to the restrictive covenants on the recorded plat. I believe that, that covers everything. Does Mr. Moran? Yes. Staff cover? Yes. We have a motion by Commissioner Richard as stated and a second by Commissioner Willie. Any further comments? Please vote. <coughs> Motion carries. And waiver granted. 2016-252-PP, -PP, Wingfield revised, Ward 1, District 3. Developer owner, Robert Bruno. Engineer, Aero Engineering and Consulting. Parish Council District Representative, the Honorable James Red Thompson. Staff. Preliminary plans and hydrologic study have been reviewed by this office and an inspection was made of the site. It's recommended that the preliminary submittal be approved subject to the following. On the subdivision plat A, did not receive revised subdivision plat as required on 427.16. B, what is the material used for the walking path? Show a cross section on the plat. C, what is the roadway access for lots 30 and 37? D, show property lines on each 30 foot drainage servitude cross sections that are shown on the drainage plan. E, 
sheets C1A and the plat were not included in the set of revised plans submitted on 42716. F, provide a private driveway for lots 30 and 37 on the plat. G, amenities are shown on the plat, playground near lot 38. Include a note stating who is to own and maintain this area. Paving and drainage plan, H, information regarding Bidico Creek and Cross Vine Drive is insufficient, requires spacing between culverts, profile, and cross sections properly labeled. Signage will need to be developed, guardrails, etc. I, 100 foot no cut buffer, this is not a right of way, need to include a note with requirements. Sewer and water, J, plans and specifications for the construction of the project's water distribution lines and sewage collection lines have not yet been approved by the Department of Health and Hospitals as required. K, no work order will be issued until submitted plans and specifications are approved by DHH. L, submit a full set of revised plans and DHH permit application to Tammany Utilities for review, comment, and approval. M, C900 water main is called out and the plans confirm that this is acceptable with Tammany Utilities. N, modify the double service connection for lots 26, 29, 30, 37, and 38 so their service can be provided to both lots. Traffic and signage. O, provide a detail for the cul-de-sac curve on Silverhorn, include all radii. P, provide a Detail or note for the access drive at the playground, including the dimensions of the parking lot, driveway, width, and turnout radii. Three, a funded maintenance obligation and the amount of $56,000 is required in accordance with Subdivision Ordinance 499, Section 4061.08, funded letters of credit for existing parish roads to ensure the repair of any damage to parish roads resulting from the construction activity in connection with the subdivision, which includes the extension of the water and sewer lines. Four, mandatory developmental fees will be required at final submittal in accordance with Ordinance 499 since no public hearing was held prior to January 1st, 2005. Planning has the following comment. Uh, Parish code requires that opposite side intersecting streets or known as street jogs must be at least 125 feet apart from each other for traffic safety purposes. Therefore, the intersection at Cross Vine and Golden Top Drives in the vicinity of lots 20 through 23 and 36 needs to be adjusted in order to comply with code. Thank you. It's the petitioner here. Hey, I'm Daryl with Aero Engineering and Consulting, 237 Natchez Trace, Covington. Um, we got 19 comments and there are no major corrections to anything. The, I guess kind of working backwards, the, the Department of Planning comment about the street jog at Silverthorne um, up there. Um, the, the C1 that you're looking at, the, the center line of Cross Vine and the center line of Silverthorne is uh, 130 foot seven inches apart and so uh, I talked to Jay about that and he was okay with it um, Ron couldn't tell that it was 125 feet by looking at it and I didn't put it on the plan so he didn't know um, but that's the only thing that appears to be a major correction and um, all the other stuff um, you know we're certainly going to comply with the engineering department and uh, and it will be right before they let us have a work order so we can build it. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak uh, in support of the request? Anyone who wishes to speak in opposition? Seeing no one, I close it to the public and I bring it to the commission. Commissioner Casabon. Yes, we don't have any waivers on this one. Um, and you agree to the staff comments? Yes. As we stated, I'll make a motion to approve subject to all staff comments. We have a motion by Commissioner Casabon, second by Commissioner Willie to approve. Commissioner Dougherty. Darrell, uh, and staff too, there's a number of items here that uh, y'all are agreeing to, but yet it's not really stated. Uh, like on item G under subdivision plan, include a note stating who is to own and maintain this area. We as a commission have not heard from you, Daryl, as to who's maintaining and uh, 
owning the, these. Yeah, that'll be on. It'll be the homeowners association. Okay. Yeah, and, and that'll be a, that'll be on the for the for the uh, residents, right? Yeah, okay. that'll be in the restrictive covenants. Okay. I turned the plat in last week after they had made the comments, and it, it's in there. The restrictive covenant is in there for that. Okay. Well, I guess I'm having a problem with it. You know, I have one set of plats. Y'all turned in another set of plats that complies with it, but yet no one on this commission has seen the, the corrected one. I understand. Okay, and, and I have a little bit of problem with that. Well, it's, that's what happened in the last two two projects, the same thing, you know. So, I mean, it, it's I understand what you're saying, and uh, but... Uh, on the other hand, you know, we, we turned in, the, the process is always the same. You know, we made the uh, submittal and then we, then we have seven days after they review it or so to, uh, to turn it in again. And so we made additional comments and we continue to work with engineering, uh, you know, to get it right. As long as it's so. and, and if I may, yeah. and I'll do respect, um, I would say that this is very different. In the previous two, each line item was specifically addressed by a council verbatim in what had transpired as compared to in Globo just saying, well, everything's done. So I think Commissioner Dougherty's question is absolutely on, on target that we would expect the commission to have the most current information that staff or the petitioner may have so that we can properly address these for the public. Well, I'd be glad to go through these line by line if you would like me to. I would defer to the commission if they wish so, but I think Commissioner Dougherty's comment to get that clarification is uh, demonstrates yeah. his fiduciary responsibility sure. to the public to request sure. it. And I agree. Commissioner Davis. Uh, Darrell, the last time you presented this was about a month ago, correct? Yes. At that time, if I recall, uh, you had four lots that were three, three acres or larger. Now you're down to three lots. So there, there has been some design change in some of these lots, is that correct, from just last month? The only design change was the, when that when the, the little knuckle at Silverthorn and Crossvine, it shifted down and to, to get the 125 feet. It's just that the underlying, the underlying zoning for this is, is A1A, correct? Yes, but the overall density is still. It, it, the density is still, act, it, the yes. density is still good. Yes. Even with, even with pushing everything up to the front because of the wetlands in the back. It's still correct. Because I know they're large acres. I mean, that, that's fine. They're, they are a nice size and everything like that. It's just that uh, I'm uh, with Mr. Doherty, too, because, I mean, it's just, you know, to be presented something and not know the changes from last week or last month to this week is a little different for me, for, anyway. Commissioner Casabon. I made a motion. Okay. You're, you're, the reason I, your light is still, oh, on. still on. Commissioner Randolph. Um, <clears throat> two questions. Um, on item 2B, what is the material used for the walking path? Just, just for my information since we don't have that. Yeah. The, on C1, there is a note that says provide three foot wide cleared path with two inches of pine mulch. Two inch pine mulch? Yeah. And item C, what is the run, what is roadway access for lots 30 and 37? Yeah, if you see on lot C1, it, there's a note that says private driveway for lot 37. Uh, and then over on the left-hand side, upper left-hand corner, there's a, for lot 30, there's also a note that says private driveway. I second the motion. Commissioner Davis. Yeah, from, from last month. And I, I'm not trying to gang up on you. I really, I really not. I just don't like the design of this, bud. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and vote against it. 
Commissioner Casabon? Yes, the reason this um, PUD has so much, the wetlands and stuff and the way it is because the shape of it is because of the wetlands and because of the drainage in this particular area that this um, subdivision allows for a lot of the drainage to be corrected um, in that particular area. The, the particular layout of it is what is helping drain a lot of other areas that will go into the Bidico Creek. So it, it is a little bit different, but uh, in the long run, if you'd see, you know, the amount of drainage and uh, how many was drainage, how many um, retention, detention we did on this one, Daryl, it was like how many acres? I forgot. It, yeah, it's it it's, was something like it's out like of three acres, over three acres. All of it. Yeah. So it, it's just it's one of those things that when everything's in place, um, the overall area will um, it will improve. So that's why I'm about. And you. I made a motion to approve. Are there any further comments or questions by the commission? If not, we have a motion by Commissioner Casabon to approve and second by Commissioner Willie. Please vote. <clears throat> motion carries. Proposed amendments to Ordinance 499. We have none. Old business, SD 03-09-011F, Bushwood Estates, Ward 5, District 6, Developer Owner, Deborah Hogan, Land Surveyor, John G. Cummings and Associates, Inc., Parish Council District Representative, the Honorable Richard Tanner. Request by developer to amend the recorded final subdivision survey plat. Staff, whenever you're ready. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll go ahead and read the letter that I had addressed to the commission regarding this issue, uh, regarding Bushwood Estates' request for final plat amendment. Uh, dear commissioners, please be advised that Mr. Paul Marone with the law firm of Jones who sell LLP is representing the developer of the above captioned development, and they are seeking uh, the uh, Planning Commission's approval to amend the final subdivision plat for Bushwood Estates. The amendments proposed are due to drainage concerns on the property that calls for adjusting some lot lines and expanding the green space in areas of the subdivision. A C letter attached uh, of explanation from the developer dated March 25th, 2016. Upon review of the request, the staff has no objections to the proposed replat of the subdivision. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions, uh, you, can, you can advise. Thank you. Mr. Marone. Thank you, Mr. Manella. Paul Marone on behalf of uh, the petitioner with regards to this replat. Um, this property is located along the Pearl River Navigational Canal in the northeast uh, corner of the parish. Uh, it was approved originally um, back, gosh, um, 2005 or 2006. And the request this evening is really a matter of shifting lot lines to um, trade out some areas to create green space and to uh, otherwise kind of relocate the lot lines. Um, we're not increasing density. We're not increasing the number of lots in any way. We're simply trying to accommodate uh, some changes that the property has undergone over the last five or ten years. Um, namely, at the northern end of the property, there is uh, what was a very small um, creek that ran through the property. Well, over the last 10 years, that creek has expanded tremendously. And as it has expanded, it has eaten away uh, at what was lot 18 on the north end of the development. And that caused us to, um, really prompted us to come before you and make this request because, because of that slew, we needed to create some additional buffers along it. We did not need a lot along it. In fact, much of Lot 18, which had originally abutted it, is gone, has been washed away. So um, we are taking away uh, Lots 18, 17, and 16 
uh, replacing that and identifying that area as green space. Also, uh, lots 10, 11, and 12, um, there is an inlet off the canal that comes into that area, in particular onto lot 12. And so we are asking to recast what was lot 12 as additional green space. We are going to ask to combine lots 10 and 11 uh, and make them just one larger parcel uh, to give uh, more area uh, for home building. And then finally, in doing all this, we're losing five lots. And so we are asking to recapture those lots through the course of, of resubdividing uh, lot seven, which was about a 15 acre track, I think originally a 14 acre track, um, into uh, different parcels to recalculate and to recalibrate our lot lines. So again, uh, we're really just shifting the lot lines to create green space where green space is more appropriate to create lots where that would be more appropriate, um, keeping the density the same, the number of lots the same, um, and we would respectfully request your approval this evening of, uh, of this replat to accommodate these changes on the property. Thank you, Mr. Marone. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in favor of the request? Is there anyone who wishes to speak in opposition? Seeing none, I close it to the public and I bring it to the commission. Commissioner Richardson. I'm, I'm familiar with this uh, area here and this uh, development, and uh, I'm over to approve. Motion by Commissioner Richardson to approve, a second by Commissioner Willie. Any further comments? Commissioner Willie, any further so, comments? Yeah. All right, we have a motion by Commissioner Richardson to approve, second by Commissioner Willie. Please vote. I had nothing to do with the vote. It's just a question for Paul. Certainly. Com uh, Commissioner Drum. Uh, do you think if we wait 10 more years, all these lots will disappear? We, we hope not. <laughs> but at the rate that that branch is expanding on the north end, we're a little concerned about that. <laughs> Motion carries. Uh, is there any new business to come before the commission? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. <laughs>